Hello everyone. Um, we're going to be doing for our next project a kind of traditional pencil rendering technique. Uh, selecting a simple object. I'll talk a little bit more about that as the video goes on here. It's a uh, kind of a furtherance of what we talked about in terms of the scribble technique. As you can see, here's a light bulb that we did uh, in class. Um, which, uh, you know, with this technique we're focusing on form, uh, kind of before structure, so modeling of the of the object, uh, the way the light rakes across the surface, call that modeling shadow, and uh, cast shadow as well, which is on the uh, surface upon which the thing is setting. Um, as you can see in these uh, drawings, they're, uh, you know, meant to have a kind of real light sense of touch. Um, so the scribbles are barely noticeable, so you have to develop a really kind of subtle approach to this drawing, more so than the, the initial drawing we did uh, with the scribbling technique. Um, and leaving, uh, you know, open, not, not outlining the thing, but leaving it open to the background in certain places. We did, uh, focused on roots or trees uh, one year, uh, a couple years rather, and um, here's an example of one. And I did. I did all of these drawings. Uh, this is a cylinder, right? So uh, um, uh, this is a prime example of, of what they uh, call con contour shadowing. So the center of the cylinder. It's just a cylinder, but it's a you know a tree, but it's a cylinder form. Center is lighter than the edges, right? Which are darker, and that automatically gives a sense of uh, form. Uh, and they call that um, uh, contour shadow. So. Uh, what, depending on what you want to draw, you want to focus on kind of bringing maybe the, the darkness up to the edge of the form, undulating that edge eventually, and then feathering back with the darkness into the form itself, or vice versa, as you can see with this leaf. Um, <clears throat> the, the bottom of the leaf, where the shadow is, kind of went in and drew, a, as I developed the drawing, went in and drew a, a you know, kind of really nice undulating line, and then backfilled in the shadow area, left the, uh, the leaf alone. So. Um, but, you know, and, and the drawings don't need to be quote unquote finished either. You know, this probably took me three hours to do, you know, so, um, it, it's a labor intensive process, but, uh, an important one to learn how to do. Um, uh, shoe, that looks familiar, huh? Uh, shoelaces. So I was really kind of interested in, in, uh, creating uh, a real sense of form and roundness with these shoelaces. I got a, a close up view of this as well. Um, so one way to do it is again look at, I'm looking at the cylinders right having mass so the shadow on the kind of bottom of the roundness of the of the lace the cylinder uh, the top is in highlight uh, so it's kind of juxtaposed against the, the darker interior portion there is a close-up view and you can see it's kind of scratchy and scribbly right close up but uh, when you step back from it and look at it, it all kind of holds together that's the nature of the universe right you know or just a bunch of protons and neutrons flying around, um, but we, uh, you know, give the appearance of being solid, of course, right? So drawings uh, no different in that regard. Uh, a little more finished uh, piece. Uh, this is a um, piece of uh, uh, a wood again that we worked on a tree, piece of a tree or root. I numbered them um, because each student had their own uh, tree, so I was uh, putting numbers on her. So I went in and drew the number on the the drawing. But a little more refined piece, but you'll see in this one how it's a combination of the scribble kind of technique and uh, starting to uh, do hatching, parallel hatching, and not only parallel hatching, but we call contour hatching, which means that you're making the hatch marks, the straight edges, right? Those parallel, straight, I'm sorry, straight lines that you repeat over and over again. You curve them so that it kind of gives a sense of curvature of form. I don't want you to do this until the end of the drawing, okay? So the last, uh, you know, maybe third, or almost the last quarter of the drawing, if that. Uh, but you can see those kind of parallel marks in there, right? And also what I'm doing is I'm going in with a little bit of flare in terms of every now and then putting just a little bit of a line in, a uh, contour line, uh, you know, on the edges of some of those forms, right? I'm not outlining the whole thing, but that happens after, you know, I, I kind of uh, do the preliminary work of scribbling the image into being to begin with. Uh, and then over time, start to pick and choose moments to uh, to pop in there in terms of a edge outline. Um, so.
So you can also see here that, that notion of the cylinder, right? You know, the, the dark on one side, light on the other, a little bit dark towards the edge in some places, even on the light side. Um, also texture, right? There's a, there's a, uh, those little kind of holes in the, in the wood. It's not just a dark spot, it has a, has a little rim on it, right? So the underneath part of that dark spot, I've taken an eraser and dabbed a little bit at the end of the drawing to create a little bit of a ridge around those things, right? To create a texture like it's in, in the wood. I don't want you to use eraser here though until the very, very, very last of the drawing. So you gotta be disciplined about this stuff. Here's uh, just another version, or the bottom of that uh, uh, trunk. I'm showing you this because you can see the hatching there, right? And I'm kind of using those little parallel hatches to kind of infer ridges in the wood there. But also a little different flavor of mark making in the, um, you know, this is late in the drawing, of course, right? In the bark area, right? To give a little bit different textural vibe to the thing. So the, the, the way you make the mark can infer texture uh, in a drawing. Another uh, branch that we did. Um, uh, you know, we did this over a number of years, of course, uh, on these branches. Uh, this one, um, uh, small little drawing, but I spent a lot of time on it. Notice the um, uh, the bottom right that branches it goes off the edge of the composition. I spent a lot of time kind of feathering in uh, value in the background area, right? Uh, so that the top of that branch could uh, have highlight on it, right? And spent a lot of time, there's a little bit closer view there, it kind of pops in. Um, uh, uh, creating that little cast shadow at the bottom of the piece, right? And picking and choosing the moments to put line in there, like the ridges in the bark there. Just to, and, it, and you gotta have a really sharp pencil when you do this, and you gotta kind of really have some confidence and pop it in with with you know some energy, you know. And you can kind of only do it once, right? So you gotta kind of have a, a sense of confidence, else you'll blow the whole drawing, right? So. Um, so I don't do that till the very end of the drawing. And then if you, if you notice along some of those lines, I kind of pulled away with an eraser to kind of, again, give that sense of, of a subtle undulation over the surface, all the while maintaining the, the global value relationships. That is the larger relationships within that cylindrical form, dark on the left, highlight on the right. But within that set of, of, of value arrangements, we have what's called local value. And that's that subtle movement between light and dark within the larger scheme of things. Uh, and then uh, we did uh, self portraits, you know, a couple of years uh, looking in the mirror. It's kind of just a, uh, one that I did of myself early on, a little bit younger there. Um, so I want to show you this as a, as a, and I have another one here, a, a little older version of me in a second, you'll see. Uh, this is on smoother paper, so it has a, a kind of a smoother look to it, where the one you'll see in a second has a rougher look, and that makes a difference too. One is not better than the other, but uh, the texture of the paper with this pencil tip uh, um, really, um, um, pick, you can pick up the texture of the paper easily with the pencil tip, and I would suggest using a probably a, HB, something like that, and keeping the pencil sharp. So it's a, just a ton, like millions and not millions, thousands and thousands of little light scribbles that build up over a long period of time to create the image. You can see the left side was the way the eye was, and then the right side is, you know, what I worked on, right? And there's another version. I'll talk about this uh, at a little more length here so you can kind of uh, get a sense of it. And I, you know, intentionally didn't finish the work, right, so that I could show students how to develop these drawings without using outline. Uh, so you can see on my right eye, you know, as I'm looking at the viewer, right, or looking at myself, uh, you know, the, the eye on the left of the page there, uh, very unresolved, right? Well, the eye on the right side of the page looked just like that, uh, and, you know. That's the way it started out. The whole drawing started out that way. Then over time, it just hovered and hovered and hovered and slowly darkened in areas until I dark, got to the darkest, 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 you know, which is, of course, the iris. And then I had what left, was left over. You know, I kind of had that light area left over. I didn't erase that away. I just left it in there as I colored everything else in, right? So that light area is the value of the, of the eye that's unfinished. It just looks lighter because it, the iris is darker around it. Makes sense? Here's a close-up view. Um, so the folds and the eye, the, you know, there's an architecture to the face that's really, really uh, important. 
And if you want to do your drawing, uh, you know, have a self-portrait, that's fine. Just set up a mirror where you got a, you know, close-up view. I don't want you to draw the head, the hair, nothing else. Just kind of focus on the face and let that all, all fade away, the head and the hair. Um, and the neck even, you know, just kind of focus on the features. So here I just want to kind of show you the, the difference between the two in terms of resolution, right? It's kind of like the shoe drawing, you know, when you, if you looked at that shoe video, I started that shoe video um, in a very ambiguous way, right? And just kind of pulled resolution into being as I worked it. Again, no erasure in this, you know, I didn't erase that at all. I just built, built the drawing up over time. So I had to, you have to be cognizant of what you want to leave light, uh, you know, what you want to leave alone as you build the drawing. Um, what else? Oh, structure of the face. You know, that's something, there's general rules involved in, if you want to do your face, general rules involved in doing the face. Essentially, the, the eyes are two eyes, or the eyes are one eye length apart. Uh, the eyes are in the middle of the head, top of head to chin. Tip a nose between eyes and chin, and mouth between nose and chin in terms of uh, measurements. So, um, but it's kind of, and then I just let it fade away, right? I didn't, you know, didn't have any need to kind of finish it. You know, it's kind of a finished drawing in and of itself. There's the overall view again. So you can kind of see, uh, you know, in terms of, of general, I, you can't really see the chins over the top of the head, so you can't get the overall vibe of the proportions, right? So. Um, but generally, that's that's the case uh, in terms of um, uh, measuring in terms of the face and the head generally. So, um, but you can kind of see how to develop these drawings very very slowly. You got to have a light sense of touch and, and a lot of patience, and that's one of the things we've worked on in this class is kind of learning how how to to be patient with this stuff. So, hope this helps, and I'll have further uh, instructions as well.